it would have pulled me right out of the tree. And I wasn't even connected to anything at that point. I was connected to a broken branch Mm -hmm. and an adjacent tree. And I'm holding my lantern that I'm supposed to be connected to because I was afraid the tree was failing. Yeah. And you're about to Um, unclip that guy. (laughs) Yes, that's I had already had it unclipped, and I'm holding one end of it, ready to let go. Oh, and get no. away from the thing. You would have because you do that, not want to be attached to a tree when it fails. Yeah, ex- and that makes sense. You're literally unclipped yourself. You're about to ready to fall backwards, and before you do that, you just think I should check the other one before I before <laughs> yes, I jump. What I'm throwing my weight into before I go on this swing. Let's check it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the podcast. This welcome. Is, this is a new everybody. podcast. It, it might have been like Demon Possessed. It was a fairly large, mutated looking chicken. We were born in the north, but we grew up in the south. We learned all of our words from Pennsylvania. And people are that toboggan. That little toboggan. It's not there. a toboggan. A toboggan is a sled. Okay. Yo, point three inches, baby. <laughs> 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 Dude, I can't take it. So how you been doing, Noah? Things going well with your business and such? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's good to be with yeah, you. Thanks, guys. thanks. Yeah, man. Honestly, I am very blessed. Very blessed, man. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I mean, the business has grown during COVID. Um. We're not huge or anything. We have a lot of growth to, you know, in front of us, but hopefully, but uh, yeah, man, this is like the grueling period and it's happened while everyone's supposedly being, you know, locked Mm. down. So it's been pretty awesome, you know, being able to work outside, being up in the trees, nothing to give you COVID out there, you know, not working on too many people. It's pretty great. Just uh. Real quick, introduce yourself a little bit to people who might not know you. <clears throat> Tell them a little bit about what you do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> so how far back uh, should I go? I don't know. Maybe um, maybe start like, well, well, we'll probably get into it. You can just start with what you do and just introduce okay. yourself, yeah. your name and such. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right on. Um, so... I'm an arborist, so I do tree yeah. care. Um, I am currently working on building a company in Rock Hill, Urban Lumberjacks, um, slash canopy crafters. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, we, man, a little, I guess I'll just work okay. my way back. So I moved to Seattle about, uh, four years ago. Um, and I, I was there for three years and I've been back. I got back last, um, May. And so that was when, after COVID hit pretty hard and the rioting was pretty bad in Seattle, I lived, um, well, I ended up in Bellingham or I'm sorry, Bellevue. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, Bellingham's awesome too. I wish (laughs) I lived there, but Bellevue is (laughs) kind of a ritzy area. And I was in the um, south end of it. And so I just love being able to go out into the mountains. Um, I guess that's, uh, if I was going to give a brief yeah. summary, I love the mountains. I love extreme sports. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's been, uh, yeah, I love hate relationship. I've broken a lot of bones, like 35 yeah. to 40. Right? That's a lot. Yeah. Rich from the neck the third vertebrae down uh the third ringed vertebrae to my ankles numerous times skating and bmxing and um some would even call it abuse (laughs) uh that i (laughs) had on my body but i i call it fun um it I, i used to see it that way now i do actually see it as abusing the temple um i've had to grow wiser um yeah Wiseman, no, I'm, <laughs> no, it's it's <laughs> it was uh, yeah. forced. Um, yes, that has been my battle, and even with the tree side of things, um, it takes a, a certain type of crazy to want to do this sort of thing mm-hmm. every day. Um, I've climbed a lot of yeah. big trees. How uh, big have you? Uh, what's the biggest? Maybe you don't keep track of this, but 
you know, living on the West oh, Coast and stuff, what's yeah. the what's the highest you've been up? I've been in a tree and removed it, and it was about 250, Whoa, 250 man. feet tall. I also, I, I remember yeah. last time we talked, you said you were doing like, you do climbing too outside of trees, like uh, cliffs and things. <laughs> oh, That's yeah. That's crazy. Rock climbing. Rock climbing yeah. yeah, man. When I was, uh, so I was in school for international business. That was kind of where I was trying to go. Um, cause I love to travel. Um, and this is kind of its own adventure, but you don't have to travel to get there. You just go up, you know? Yeah. And it's kind of like snowboarding, like snowboarding out East. You know, I grew up on the East coast and I thought I could snowboard. And then I went out to Colorado when I was like 13. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> I have no idea what yeah. snowboarding is. I thought I could climb anything out there. I was like, yeah, I'm, 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 you know, I used to compete and there are some big oaks and big trees around here. We have the biggest log lolly pine in the world in South mm -hmm. Carolina in Congaree forest or swamp, but the, it's just another scale. It's like, okay, I, I, I climb trees, but then you get Douglas firs. Um, I removed a huge, uh, red or, uh, you know, uh, sequoia yeah. um redwood so um the biggest tree was a douglas fir i was when i moved to seattle this is this was a pretty nerve-wracking and i for me to actually have my nerves rattled yeah um it's not even so it, it sticks out you know oh sorry am i still on uh, we see your name there you go there you go mm -hmm. okay there we go all right, my You're bad, good, man. Um, technology, not so much, but if it has to do with trees, seeds, you know, uh, the gardening, I'm more inclined that yeah. way. But yeah, this was actually a tree that, well, I, I, when I moved to Seattle, I started doing framing because there's so much construction. Now what's framing? And I like framing as well. Framing? Yeah, what is framing? Home. So gotcha. we were working on a home. Mm. And I, I, I moved out there without a job, uh, without really knowing what I was going to be doing, but um, had some framing experience and I got hired on to a crew and it was pretty awesome. And then I started reaching out to the tree community there and I was kind of slowly meeting some cool guys and there's an awesome community out there um, of great guys because it's hard sometimes in every industry, especially labor forces, to find quality um companionship you know when it comes to like crews that you want to yeah, work with yeah. um there are a lot of drug addicts i had a guy pass out in a tree that was my foreman that i was contract climbing oh, for goodness, out there that's crazy and so this was actually the first yeah um man i, I yeah that was intense how high up um, was he when he fell he out disappeared. oh he he fell out but he was unconscious he didn't actually oh, fall okay. out of the tree oh. my bad when I said fell out, yeah, my bad. Um, but he was tied in and everything, but he actually just passed out oh, unconscious. Man. And he's just slumped up there. And I was up in another tree in the backyard, and they said, oh, such and such is unconscious in the tree. And I was like, what the heck yeah. happened, you know? Like, get, wake him up or something. And they're like, we can't. And, of course, I'm running chainsaws. I don't know what's going yeah. on in the front yard. So I jump out of my tree. I, You know, you, you're tied in all the time. I'm always ready to zip out if I can or if I need to. And so I repelled out, started climbing his tree and he wakes mm -hmm. up and, um, man, uh, he was not happy. He was like, what is going on? I'm like, man, this is an aerial rescue. I'm here to save your life. You were just out cold for like 10 yeah. minutes, man. Um, so it took a little bit, uh, and I had to thresh through the, uh, the weeds a little bit to find the, the community yeah. out there. But, they, there are some great guys out there and I'm, you know, I started business mm -hmm. timber brothers, um, which has its mm -hmm. own story, but for the largest tree yeah. going back to that, that was, um, uh, Dave, I'm trying to remember his name. I, um, I don't want to guess a, cause he's, he's actually Dave. a really good, he's an awesome Dave. arborist. He helped actually start, um, the, the, ANSI standard for risk assessment okay. in Seattle. Um, and he's a, he, he used to 
uh, compete as well. Um, and, and that competition is actually for rope climbing and it's an arborist competition. It's not a lumberjack mm-hmm. competition. Um, so we had kindred spirits. And so he, he told me, all right, well, first day, and I was doing framing. So I had not climbed a tree in mm-hmm. about six months. And so, but, you know, it's, I love it. And I, and I came from rock climbing. I don't mind heights, obviously, but I got up there and I just kept climbing and I'm, you know, I'm making my way up there. I'm making progress and I'm looking down, I'm high, but I'm still, I can't even see the top of this thing. Just as big around as when I started. And, you know, I'm like getting up past a hundred feet, you know, typically where trees around here Mm -hmm. max out 150. You just keep, you just keep climbing at 150. I had the first limbs, (laughs) you know, and it was just, it was kind of mind blowing. Like I have never seen a big tree yeah. in my life. This is so now, was hot. that Was that pretty it early on ridiculous. when you got out there to do this tree work? Was that biggest tree one of the earlier projects or was that well into it? Oh no, that was the first oh, tree man. I did. That's gotta be insane. Yeah. When you got up when you got up there as high as you went, mm-hmm. did you go all the way to the, like close to the top or was it, would it still have a good ways above you? Yeah. Well, okay, so there were a number of things that made me afraid in this situation because trees, they can do funny things. And there was wind. I mean, I don't know if there's always wind at 200 feet up, but, or, you know, I, I, the tree was 250. Yeah. Um, that's what our calculations were. And so I had to go up probably about 220. So I would have typically just gone to where I'm comfortable taking the top. In this situation, it was in yeah. the woods. So I could take okay. it any direction and I could fit it in the, in the woods somewhere, but it was windy. So I really could only take it one direction and I didn't want to take it huge because I didn't know how far it would fly because it was yeah. that windy. Um, it's not just the height, but Seattle. Um, I didn't realize how bad the weather was until I spent three years there, but it's, you get some constant storms that roll in and they're not terrible, but they are pretty constant, like every day yeah. for six when, months. When a big tree like yeah. that, when you're taking the top and letting it, you know, drop to wherever you're you're planting it, what is it like for something that massive to fall 225 yeah. feet out of the air? It's yeah, unreal. Crazy. It never gets old. Um, I mean, dare say I, I could be considered an adrenaline <laughs> no, junkie. For sure. You know, but for this sure, is like man. my thing. There's no you doubt. Um, I, <laughs> yeah, for I, people I, who I, don't know, to give, just give a little context on how we know Noah, um, we've always been close to your family since, since like 2009. Uh, since, I was like, since I was like 10 um, years old. Yeah. Like for most of our yeah. life. Um, you're older than us. So but well, we, we're, yeah. we've... We've been friends with your whole family, but primarily I'm really close your, to your brother, your Tim. brother, because you have a younger brother named Tim, and he's been on the Midnight Special. Oh podcast. yeah, um, and so yeah, okay. so getting into that a little bit, we've very familiar. For some reason, you guys don't have a fear of normal fears, <laughs> no. um, which I'm curious. <laughs> I don't know if we ever want to get into it at some point in this podcast, but I, I'm interested to hear what your actual fears are because. You guys don't seem to be scared of stuff that normal people are. Um, so if I am, if I'm doing some, some people call that. Thing. <laughs> no, no, no. I really, I really think there's an art form to it. So something you guys, something you do specifically, is you already said you're an adrenaline junkie. You're into extreme sports. You've done. I did not admit such things. I said that would be an accusation people would have. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put that on you. <laughs> I'll concede. All right, but um okay. but you are definitely into extreme sports. Yeah. Whatever whatever you need to be able to do that, you got it. Um I'm I'm personally afraid of heights. Yeah. Not paralyzed, but I get nervous. Uh so the idea of me scaling a huge tree two hundred and twenty five feet up in the air it doesn't even exist in my mind. Even the idea of skydiving makes me nervous, and I know there's a lot of there's a lot of things. You've been skydiving multiple times. Um, I think you skydived. You told me one time you skydived in Hawaii and just landed in the ocean. I mean, you obviously had a parachute open, I'm assuming, but uh, but you just like are skydiving, just looking at the island and seeing the blue water and just 
It's one of the be most beautiful places on earth. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. From up that high, when you're yeah. flying through the air, it actually, that's quite an amazing, you know, yeah. feeling. Um, <laughs> it is. Although I, I, I don't know if I have the confidence to be a skydiver yeah. for a living. And that's only because I do trust equipment, but I know it's bulky sometimes it's yeah. going to fail at some point. It wears out. Obviously you, you, you live whenever yeah. you, uh, anticipate mm -hmm. those breakdowns. Um, and that's part of my life. Absolutely. But there's something about rock and trees and relying on things that are naturally occurring that I have faith in more than man-made equipment many times. Like if I went 250 feet up in the tree or up in a boom lift, that was, I don't think there's a lift that goes that high, yeah. a crane. Um, I, dude, I'd be thinking about every bolt, <laughs> every solder line and every weld. I mean, it, it would just drive me nuts just thinking about how many people were involved and how careless they could have been in making that um, machine and scaffolding is the same way. I don't like ladders. Yeah. You're saying you wouldn't do skydiving for a living, but you would, but you do pretty intense, like your job is intense, yeah. you know? Now I've heard Tim, oh, I've heard Tim use this phrase. I wonder if you have the same mentality. Tim always says he has something similar. He says he doesn't trust like equipment, but he trusts his hands. Like if he can get his hands on it, then he trusts his hands to to get the job done and keep him safe. Is that something similar for you? I I see where Tim's coming from, and you know, I can say it's almost the exact opposite. Yeah, only because many things are not trusted yeah. even if your hands don't slip i mean tim experienced that firsthand yeah. Right, yeah. right yeah um and i've had many close calls where i thought i was i was confident in something it was a dead branch or something i didn't didn't pay attention to mm -hmm. so i would say it's actually trusting actually the equipment um believe it or not so when your hands fail the equipment saves you okay i just don't want a constant reliance on equipment like suspended thousands of feet in the air kind of reliance yes if i need to fall back it's there and i'm always tied in twice if i'm using a chainsaw um you know you can always cut through a line pretty easily <laughs> but um you know because that's a whole nother element i was rock climber mountain biker snowboarder um you know anything extreme you know where i can push my limits and really get hurt <laughs> potentially <laughs> um i guess just flirting with danger i don't know i mean is that what attracted you to tree, tree work what was that is that what attracted you to tree work oh man that was part of it absolutely yeah it satisfies something within me for sure it's kind of a combination of a thrill of being engaged yeah and uh probably just hard work i don't know i love yeah. working with my hands creating, even though it's somewhat destructive as well, that's its own kind of, you can repurpose. So I turn it into firewood and have a chainsaw mill, you know, Alaskan saw mill. And I've seen some furniture you know, so I, made, like cutting out yeah. of trees and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm definitely gearing more of that direction. Um, but it, it's kind of like that whole, I, I love to destroy. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> There's something amazing about that sound whenever a tree falls to the ground. You know, that amazing power. Um, there's so much weight and inertia and force. The physics of it is just like mind blowing when you're feeling it, you know? Yeah. And um, there's, there's an engagement there that is just, it's really cool to be engaged on a r real level like that on a regular basis. Mm hmm. And then it's just raw, like manpower that gets you up there, that gets this thing down. It's like you kind of wrestle it to the ground. You're like slaying a dragon every day. <laughs> that um, is funny. That's what it is. You know? Yeah. yeah. Hey, it's my fantasy. So, when some, if you notice something's going wrong, or maybe it's about to go wrong, or maybe you notice equipment's going to fail, or you have a feeling it does, how do you mm. process? 
how to save your life. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that, yeah. Oh, I know what you mean. Okay. I've been in that position many times. Break that down for us I, because that's interesting. Not many people experience that often. Yeah. yeah. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah. You're, you're asking like what it feels like to get to that tipping point. Yes. When you reach the end of your capacity, that limitation, what, what is that feeling when you push past it, that barrier? And I love flirting with that line. <laughs> I love confronting it and wrestling with it. And that's the casualties are high, but that's why I say, you know, I used to at least act like I wouldn't admit it verbally, but um, as if it was worth it. Yeah, I'd get injured, but it was fun. And it was not just fun. It was actually growth. Yeah. Um, of course, I have ribs sticking out of my chest, you know, that it's not, I'm not Frankenstein or anything, but <laughs> I mean, I have the scars, yeah. you know, and it's, I can't really say it was worth it because I, I the inva- advancement that I see now, it's like, ah, yeah, you can backflip on a snowboard. whoop you do How's that going to help you? But in the moment, at the time, I'm pushing past any limitation um, that I had previously, like busting a new move and shredding, you know, untouched powder and that sort of um, pulling a 360 on a bike, you know, there's something about it. it. The risk is high. It doesn't matter how many times you do it because you always want to go bigger. Yeah. But it's still, that risk is always there. And, oh man, specifically when things go wrong, that feeling, because I've been in trees before and it, they fail occasionally. Yeah. But I've, um, you know, dead trees. I've done very, I've been in a lot of sketchy situations. Mm-hmm. Most guys would not want to be in. I'm talking like connecting with a three phase where I'm fairly certain it was only the hand of God that was protecting me. Mm-hmm. I don't have any other, you know, justification for being alive. Um, so some, some foolish mistakes, obviously I'm, you know, prone to <laughs> that decision making, mm-hmm. but at the same time, um, there it could have been a lot worse. And that's kind of what makes it worthwhile. Yeah. In the end, it's like, I only broke a rib. That totally could have been my life, you know, flying off this cliff, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's that is actually part of the thrill. It's the fast thinking. When that occurs and things go wrong in the tree, okay, I'll just, I'll, I'll tell you a brief story. Yeah. Um, so I'm in a tree. Um, you're probably familiar with Manchester Meadows. Yes. Okay. So I was working for the city and I helped start um, Arbor Vision. Um, and that was with Peter Herlin. And he he's a phenomenal arborist. He taught me a pretty much all I know about trees. He knows a boar culture very well. And um, he put me up in a huge dead um, tulip poplar. And there was no lift that was, you know, could access it, no crane. And so I had to climb it and I was tied into another tulip poplar that was a little shorter right beside it. So that was my anchor point. So I get my throw ball out. I set my anchor point, pull my rope through, have that anchor point, start up the dead one. And it was, it was about 80 feet tall. This was a big tulip poplar, probably, um, about eight feet DBH, which is the diameter at chest height. So you're talking like you need a 42 inch bar to take this thing down. Mm -hmm. And it it was a big tree. Well, I was in part of it and I was, I had to lower everything down on ropes. I couldn't free cut anything because it was right on the side of this, you know, the pond out there or the little lake or whatever. Yeah. So I'm tied in up here and I'm cutting what I don't trust. And I'm afraid the whole tree is going to fail at some point because I have to rig my anchor point for rigging the wood down and the branches has to be in the dead tree because there was no other way to make it work. Yeah. And so throwing those loads into an anchor point, you know, I'm listening for cracking. I'm I'm feeling the, you know, the, the energy of the wood to see where, which way it's going and how it feels, you know, I'm just being super sensitive and I hear something cracking. I took a big top, And I heard something crack and I felt a shift. And so I thought the tree was going over. So I'm tied in twice, right? I'm tied in with my lanyard around the dead tree and my anchor point in the adjacent tree. And so I unclipped my lanyard because I thought the dead tree was failing, Mm -hmm. but I didn't realize that the limb, the, the top that I took 
it was a big enough chunk that it actually took part of the top of the tree I was tied into. Oh. And these are the types of things, um, obviously, if it's hard to overlook certain things when you're focused on what you're doing, running chainsaws, you know, all of this going on. It caught the top and it actually ripped my tie-in point out. It didn't fall out completely, but it was broken off to where my tie-in point was not secure anymore. And so before I noticed what that my anchor point was the one failing, I heard the cracking and I took my lanyard off. It was that split second thinking that I looked behind me and I saw that it was my other anchor point and I just clipped it right back in. Oh As you were but, falling? <laughs> no, I wasn't falling. Oh, okay. I was still in the tree. But if that had actually gone to the ground mm -hmm. and because I was closer to that than we were to the ground, it would have pulled me right out of the tree. And I wasn't even connected to anything at that point. I was Ooh. connected to a broken branch mm -hmm. and an adjacent tree. And I'm holding my lantern that I'm supposed to be connected to because I was afraid the tree was failing. Yeah. And you're about to um, unclip that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes that's i had already had it unclipped and i'm holding one end of it ready to let go oh and get no. away from you would have because you do that, not want to be attached to a tree when it fails yeah ex and that makes sense but you're so because okay so I, I i didn't know about the adjacent tree stuff that makes total sense once you say that but the fact is the adjacent tree had been it's compromised so you're no longer you're no longer being supported by the adjacent tree. You're, what, what is that called? Your safety or, or what is that? Yeah, that's my climb line. Okay. And so the only one that was holding you was the one that is in the tree you think might be dead or you think is probably yeah. dead. And you're thinking that's about yeah. to fail. You're literally unclipped yourself. You're about to ready to fall backwards. And before you do that, you just think I should check the other one before I before <laughs> yes, I jump. Yes, what I'm throwing my weight into. Before I go on this swing, let's check it out. <laughs> yeah. And it actually it, you had that's it backwards, funny. man. That's nuts. Yeah. And you're 80 yeah, feet in the air. That was a scary moment. Yeah. Oh gosh. That was a that was a pretty that was one of those moments that I just clipped back in and just sat there for for a few like a minute or so and just. Had, uh, you know, anytime that happens, there is a distinct realness of, uh, I don't know. It's just, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just, I just thank God. Yeah. I'm just like, you know, there's not much you can do when you face, yeah. when you face your mortality and we are like, I could be dead right now. But like, there's nothing else you can do because all of a sudden you're thinking about death. You're thinking about how you're not dead in that moment when you easily could have been like there's nothing else to do but just pray and thank god man yeah yeah it really isn't yeah how many times right, have you man. fallen out of a tree because i know last time we talked you're like oh i'm sore because uh <laughs> i just fell out of the tree the other day and oh I'm like, my goodness <laughs> do you not bring that up <laughs> Sir, only one time only one, one time. time that was the only time and oh man, I'm even embarrassed that that came up because <laughs> that's like taboo, man. It's not like getting bucked off of a horse if you're training horses. Like, mm. oh yeah, I'm a cowboy now. I got bucked off six times. <laughs> no, you fall out of a tree and you're usually dead. Oh yeah. man. I have friends that have, um, and, and some of them haven't died, thank God. But oh, yeah. um, I didn't die. I, I was <laughs> like 10 feet yeah. up in the air, maybe 12. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I was starting up another tree and it, the sun was going down, starting my own business. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into it, right? It's just like, they, just persevere. Yeah. That's that's what I'm thinking. At the end of the day, it's like, just hang in there. It's hot. I don't handle the heat very well. And I'm trying to get the job done. And I was out there climbing in one last tree for the job and... I was pruning it, but I actually stepped on a branch. Oh, I was tied into a branch that was dead. Um, and it was a good size limb, but I, if I was not so careless, I would have noticed that it was dead. There are giveaways that anyone that's around it all the time, you know, I just should, I know better, but I tied into it and I just went to go out and start pruning something and threw some weight into it. And it just crashed right out mm. and I landed on my back. And uh, from 10 feet up, I mean, I was a little sore. Yeah. But 
Um, you know, I, the limb didn't land on me. I wasn't running a chainsaw at the time. It was, it could have been a lot worse. Is this like, is working with trees like you do, is it kind of, are there people who do it for a long time and never had any serious injuries or is it pretty much inevitable at some point, like riding a motorcycle, like some people say, you know? I've also totaled a motorcycle and <laughs> that was worse. Oh God. That was worse. Um, I mean, I, I was very fortunate for that as well. And I actually snowboarded in Colorado the next day because we had that much powder. I was like, I can't sacrifice this. <laughs> but it felt like I got hit by a car. Man. Um, but it's the question um, or the answer is uh, kind of both. There's, there's inevitable uh, mayhem that involves serious uh, injury. It's not necessarily always like fatal or serious, but um, every, every tree guy I know that I've encountered, they have stories and some of them have scars, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> some of them aren't here anymore. Yeah. Um, it's a serious industry that, like I said before, it's a certain sort of crazy that is att attracted to this sort of industry. What, what kind of um, person do you have to be? Like from your experience, what kind of person do you think you have to be physically? What kind of person you have to be emotionally, mentally, you know? You have to be a fighter. I don't know. It's like almost like Viking. I mean, I kind of look like a Viking currently, <laughs> but I'm just throwing my hair out. I'm it not, looks good, I'm, man. I, you know, I'm not it a looks fighter. Good. <laughs> I, I haven't been in many fights at all as an adult. I used to as a kid, but that's different. That's part of growing up, you know, yeah. <laughs> and in my book it was, <laughs> but um, it, it's uh dude, I, I know a guy that I climbed with in Seattle and he is 62. Um, uh, awesome dude. He was in the IRA in, in Ireland wow. back in the day. I mean, that's so, a, a wide variety of types, mm -hmm. a lot of military, a lot of anyone that wants a challenge that loves to like really have a substantial challenge in front of them and just tackle it. Um, yeah. because there are, there are a lot of guys that do tree work, but they don't succeed because they, it, it's kind of a produ production, um, driven industry, like capitalist mm -hmm. industries are, yeah. uh, which I love by the way, because if you're, if you want to attack, then the opportunity is there. You can charge a little less, Yeah, you know, if you have little tricks, if you have experience, you can get away with, uh, I shouldn't say get away with, but not cutting corners at all. Yeah. Um, cause that's, you always pay the cost for that. Yeah. But, um, there are things you learn that you, you uniquely yeah. know, you know, because of yeah. years of experience doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And having other trees around, they're always doing aerial rescue and, um, high angle rescue. Those are classes that I really appreciate, uh, for introducing new ideas, you know, for how to tackle different projects. Cause many times you can hang, uh, suspended blocks or pulleys and other trees or speed line, you know, things, uh, limbs, whole trees, you know, to other trees or other areas. And so they're, and, and with having, you know, a good idea of the, uh, the different options, there's so many technical advantages with pulleys and rope. It, uh, it's always a puzzle that you're putting together when you're removing something. Um, it, it's, it's its own kind of art form, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. Is it so you're saying a fighter and you keep using these kind of words? Is it more like, does it kind of feel like you're going to war against nature or something? <laughs> sort of, yeah. I mean, forces of nature, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, I need sunlight for oxygen. I need sunlight to work. I need water. I need, you know, but then I'm, I'm, I'm contending with gravity mm -hmm. and, the i don't know what is it the second law of th thermodynamics yeah, yeah. um you know it's like everything tends towards disorder yeah you get yeah. to encounter that on a regular basis and that's a serious law to contend with mm -hmm. but it's it's a reality that honestly if anything because i get a lot of people that a lot of tree huggers 
<laughs> I don't, I'm not, I'm not trying to offend anyone. I am, if anything, the Lorax that speaks for the trees. I do not <laughs> yeah. butcher trees. Yeah. I, you know, I actually, and I have the best interest of the tree at heart mm-hmm. yeah. and, you know, obviously the prerogatives of the customer. Cause that's, I'm not, the trees don't pay me directly, yeah. you know, yeah. but at the same time, that's a balancing act. And I'm, it, to me, it's going back to my work ethic and things like that. That's Genesis. It's like, the, this is my duty. I am supposed to take care of the earth, you know, and mm-hmm. in my case, that's trees. Mm-hmm. And so for me, destroying, you know, something, butchering it, you know, that's the furthest thing of, you know, f- from my, my goal. And I've had people at Winthrop, for instance, that know nothing about what they're talking about coming up to me and just cussing at me telling me, how do you sleep at night? And I'm pruning deadwood out of it, you know, big deadwood out of big oaks that could kill people. I am preserving life, you know? And the oak actually appreciates it too. Yeah, He's getting a little trim, a little pruning out of it. And so, you know, and I tell him, I feel great. I mean, this is (laughs) hard work. I mean, what what do you expect? But um, there's also kind of the, the repurposing of the wood too. If I am destroying something, it's to rebuild. Yeah. It's, you know, it's to plant another tree. It's to achieve, you know, light for a garden, you know, or whatever. But I always try and justify it somehow. Um, you know, practically speaking, yeah. just for my own conscience, I'm trying, you know, it's easy to be destructive, but I'm actually trying to create something better. Yeah. You love, ultimately. you love nature and you love creation. And yeah. And that you're coming at it with a very pure intention. And, uh, that makes perfect sense to me. I mean, a lot of people who are really into hunting do the same thing. Um, not everybody, yeah. but a lot of people into hunting say, you know, the population and the habitat becomes out of whack yeah. if if animal populations are not encountered with, you know, a certain amount of weeding out. And if you're doing it naturally, then you're utilizing the death of animals to support life in other ways for your family, for your friends. And you're doing it in a way that's not like this slaughterhouse or not like just manufacturing meat. You're doing yeah. it in a way that is almost helping nature and nurturing nature in a oh, sometimes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, preach, man. I mean, that that is truth. That is not a justification for taking something's life. That is preserving life as a whole Mm -hmm. because we can we are as human beings we're given authorship the authority to look at what's best for all of the aspect the whole ecosystem so you know and that's done by monitoring controlling the the species of other you know there there are so many um examples of that in nature recent times that you let you you preserve a certain species and then they run wild and they stampede another species Mm -hmm. and now another Mm -hmm. species is extinct so trying to help oftentimes creates a larger problem than you had to begin with trying to preserve but not really seeing the full picture just the life of this cute little critter because he's cute or whatever i don't know Yeah. yeah but i mean preserving is usually um you know you are kind of thinning the crop usually that's what it looks like certainly with trees and I'm a hunter as well. I don't hunt all the time, but I, I appreciate life enough. Seriously. This is not um, something that I find trivial. Mm -hmm. I, I have more disdain for someone that would eat all vegetables except for chicken nuggets from McDonald's because they don't have to slaughter it themselves and, and clean it, Mm -hmm. you know, because they can't take the life, but, Oh, it, well, I guess now at McDonald's, it's not really chicken. Yeah. Anyways, if it was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think there's some um, chicken in there. It's just not much. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah. It, it's it's part of the experience of like really valuing the life. Yeah. I mean, I, I know when I'm cutting a tree down at the end of it, I mean, and this is a little hokey, but sometimes I just say it. I just, yeah, I, I, I actually like thank God for the life. Yeah. Um, Many times what I do involves treating the trees for uh, insects and, and diseases. But when I'm killing insects, you know, if, from doing a bark drench or a trunk wrap or something to keep the bugs from infesting this thing, I'm killing a ton of bugs. 
and it's life. I mean, that's, they're breathing life. I mean, they, they, you know, they have factories within them that are digesting the same essence and qualities of like oxygen and sunlight and that in, in, in my view, I mean, mm-hmm. and that's, that's life it has to be preserved and honored. And I've turned clients down that would pay me a good sum to do a job when there was no good reason to take it down. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's because of one experience. I took down a huge white Oak and I asked the lady beforehand, so why do you want to take down this beautiful tree? Cause it had great structure and white Oaks usually have poor structure cause they have competing leads. Yeah. And you don't want one dominant lead for the structure of any tree. It's better to have one dominant and then subordinate leads, mm-hmm. which they're everything in tree, uh, in the tree world and agriculture, it's all biblical. Yeah. You know, like there's so much truth packed in everything that I do every day. It's just, that's why I love it. And yeah. you know, another aspect, but this subordination that takes place, it had an awesome structure and this white oak is sitting in her backyard. I'm like, what more could you ask for? Seriously, like shade wise, this is just awesome. And she said her dog would eat the acorns and get sick. Mm. And I said, well, can't you teach the dog not to eat acorns? <laughs> yeah. Like, it, you know, can't this be like a little project or something? She's like, no, I try. I'm like, hey. <laughs> but anyway, it, I took the tree down and I just, there were a few things that went wrong on that job, which, you know, it's not uncommon, but it, I just felt a little guilty about that. It may seem silly. No, I, don't I just, think it's silly I, at all. yeah, I have to inquire about it and feel good about taking the tree down. If yeah, it's yeah. coming down, I mean, I do it every day. So, um, that's it's awesome. not like it's on my, yeah, yeah. that's, that's, I've taken awesome. a lot of trees down, but always a good reason. Yeah. That's awesome. And you building a company based on those kind of morals and based on those kind of you know questionnaire you know even just asking a question you're building a company based on ethical ethical management of nature yeah and it's it's awesome i think it's uh you have a great perspective and a very passionate love for it you know yeah i i think uh you're your mindset of going into things too is is interesting and it's always interested me that's why i suggested that we have you on the podcast because okay. even like for me and i know right now i'm trying to learn how to like every day be thankful for just very basic things and you even mentioned like being thankful when you take down a tree and like thank god and stuff yeah heck yeah man that is huge i can't even I mean, I can try and <laughs> describe how impactful that is. Yeah. I would say <clears throat> the core of every part of the success that I've had in my business and my life, honestly, and um, this is just the truth of it. It's knowing God is there. Mm-hmm. It's actually just, it's, treating his presence as if it's real. Mm -hmm. And if you do, if you step out and you actually do that, he, he reinforces it. And I'm telling you, I've had the hand of God on me, protecting me because I have Mm -hmm. like, I mean, I broke my neck. Remember that there there's, but many things where I, um, I know the, 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 all of the success from the situation came, came from him mm. because there are so many opportunities that I've had that only came about because for instance, like my work ethic, um, I, I've always been a hard worker, but I've always been aware that I'm accountable for what I do. And mm. I'm, I'm being invested in like this, the soul that I was given was given for me as an investment. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a terrible and those parables like the when it's real um that creates such a hunger in me to want to do hard things um to just to want a challenge yeah i need to contend with reality today and it has to be everything i have i don't know i mean it seems extreme but it's just a constant reminder and it's mm. always in the back of my mind i can't play games you know other people you know, we can play games with, like I can have a facade that I show other people, but God sees you all the time. Mm-hmm. There, it's just fundamentally different. 
like you just under you can't fool him he knows me better than i know myself yeah so it, being just being real with him that's dude that's you know we can talk about the bible and um that's like the map but if you're gonna actually like the treasure map mm. and this is an analogy that i really like um but it's most guys that i know that really know god um and don't aren't hypocritical um with it that can that's kind of a, a deep kind of concept but it's just real with god those guys met him out in the woods they met him in a place of need and desperation yeah. um i'm not saying everyone but the guys you know a lot of guys meet him out there and um and, and girls i'm sure and that's kind of where the gold is found mm -hmm. you have the the map for the gold and you can memorize it you can meditate on it you can um seek out all the different you know metaphors and whatnot but unless you're in the the forest and you're hiking in the woods you're not going to reach the gold you're not using it properly yeah and it has to be applied in a way that's real you know yeah i yeah i mean there's a lot of people say um obviously the three of us we believe it, we very deep spiritual belief in god a lot of people do reference their nature as being healing about being you know uh i mean it's a big part of it, it kind of comes up from where you know in the 60s hippie culture came in um you know preserving life like uh you know let's have drugs and let's get closer to nature you know what i mean that kind of okay. stuff um oh yeah but the chemical side of nature yeah yeah but it's it's always like these hu humans not all humans but a large majority of humans have this whether they believe in god or not they have this desire to maybe unlock something in nature unlock their our knowledge of nature get closer to it we're going to understand life and the meaning of life and everything so much better if we get closer to nature you know what i mean and um it's interesting oh, yeah. even the bible talks about like what you just said the bible talks about god's hands are kind of written all through nature and it's kind of there where you can see him clearest mm. um yeah. probably the second place you can see him clearest is through humans but humans are flawed you know um nature yeah. and all of its wonder and splendor has a very clear hand of god yeah and even yes, like um something that i think of is like maybe in christian culture today a lot of people are they do take the hippie movement and they would they kind of want to push it away and they don't want to um be that way because of that but i think as christians god even adam in the in uh he put adam in the garden to take care of the garden so as humans i think it is our job to take care of like the trees take care of the earth and uh, stuff like that yeah bro yeah yes how uh Dude, that was sorry go no ahead. you go ahead i, I was just gonna say you how know, i loved all of the words that you just said both of you yeah how, how would you recommend because there's so many people out there um not necessarily for us i mean we we currently live in a city which sometimes we're just like mm. this sucks like <laughs> we live next to the ocean so that that's good to go and just try to keep focus on the ocean and not look behind us at all the buildings um <laughs> but but we uh sometimes it's just like man i i, I do want to be in nature like i want to be close to nature so like we go out if we can go out and country or somewhere and film like a video or just do something to have reason to be out there or just hang out or something we we try to do that and we've grown up in in mm. country areas we've been camping we've not as many as you have you have a an addiction I made it a priority. to explore <laughs> yeah yeah i have i have <laughs> and, yes. and, well you you're very uh you care a lot about exploring nature on a next level you know like contending with nature um and so how would you ex like motivate someone who doesn't doesn't go out and experience it just breathe mm. fresh air doesn't go out and experience nature go on a hike just to see like hey look at what the mountains look like in person not in a picture or a painting or something you know what i mean how would you motivate someone yeah. to actually just be like hey try this a lot of people do it you should try it out mm -hmm. well honestly I would just say exactly that. Try it. Um, to me, one, like I, I feel, you know, 
oppressed in cities, probably more than most out there. <laughs> and I feel like that lackadaisical, I mean, just driving through Seattle, I would feel that way. Yeah. But um, being around too much man-made, you know, stuff is just, it, I think it's something that antagonizes all of us at some point. I'm just more sensitive to it. It's just like, it's aggravating. You know, I can't spend like a whole day in the city. Mm -hmm. I, I know that's crazy, but um, I could, but I think it's actually trying it. I think because it's kind of like once you initially do it, it's so enjoyable. It, it becomes something that you love. Um, it doesn't have to be super extreme. Although I, I would say the more extreme it is, the more um, exerting and the more effort you're putting into it, the more rewarding, rewarding it is. Mm -hmm. That's for me. I mean, I can tell you straight up. I never, it's, it's, it, you receive the two in equal measure, yeah. you know, as far as effort and reward. And and that's a tricky thing with pleasure. It's like, you know, you can watch an IMAX, you know, presentation of the Alps, but unless you go and you not only look at them, but if you hike through them, actually hike in them, mm -hmm. there's an appreciation that you just can't get any other way. And, and if you're not working for it, there's, you lose so much, even though you don't necessarily catch it. Yeah. Um, I think media is dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Only for that reason, because we kind of get lulled to this, you know, sense of like how, you know, we, I don't know, it kind of deceives me into thinking that maybe I've experienced something that I haven't. Um, I don't know. It's um, so much more rewarding to go out and actually see it. Mm -hmm. it's a lot more investment, you know, to go to the Alps, but you could start with a local hike. I mean, I love some of the hikes around here yeah, yeah. in Virginia, Cascading Falls, a lot of the waterfalls in West Virginia. I remember um, a, a big hike of, we went on, uh, the Appalachian Trail. Yeah. You remember that, that year? We yeah, went? dude. Yeah. That was a fun trip. Yeah. Yeah. That's like spending, yeah. and now that, that's just spending, um, like a group of guys just get together and go on like a week hike and you just hike like 50 to 60, 60 miles yeah. um on the at and that's a good time i mean that's like that's a a not too crazy but a good middle ground to really appreciate nature is like mm -hmm. kind of kind of feel nature surround you and spend time in it don't just be like all right afternoon and you're done early you know what i mean yeah like spend yeah. some time there like breathe it sleep in it feel it you know get cold from yes. it that kind of stuff yes and you'll yes. definitely meet some people that are very interesting <laughs> there are always uh plenty of entertaining through hikers yeah. on the Appalachian. yeah but i totally agree and especially with the cold um and with the actual environment um you know i've been out in the cold before I used to go when I was in Washington to the Olympic Peninsula mm -hmm. for a while. Would go every weekend, and there's so much to explore there. But it gets really cold, and it can go from you know like 90 degrees, and then you start hiking in elevation, you can get to snow, you know, at the end of the day. So sometimes, if you, I wasn't always aware of where I was heading, <laughs> and so I I ended up in some cold situations yeah. with my summer bag. <laughs> and so I had to like stuff it with leaves, you know? And so they're always, you know, to, for insulation, it actually works really well, but there it's just the shivering of like being out there and experiencing it and then figuring out, Oh, there's tons of leaves around me. I can insulate my bag and then actually sleeping. It's just that whole experience of like the stress mechanisms. I love Wim Hof yeah. uh, and his breathing I was actually and his just cold thinking therapy. About that. Wind off. Dude, I, I jump in the pool. If I'm not jumping in the pool, you know, during winter, I'm in the cold shower, if nothing else. <laughs> I engaging in the stress mechanisms is part of it. Um, not that it's fun, but it's invigorating afterwards. And you realize, wow, I'm actually capable of way more than, you know, you just realize that they're you're capable of more. Yeah. I don't know. It's just it's an inspiring thing. Yeah, it is. How but, how uh how do you think nature and becoming invigorated through cold, you know, experiencing the elements, how, what do you think that does 
and exerting yourself? What do you think that does for like mental health and stuff? Like, do you oh, dude. compared to like maybe a day where you're struggling or a day where you have just worn yourself out? You know, what what's what's the do for the brain and the, the mind? It is medicine, brother. <laughs> uh, <laughs> telling you, man. Um, I don't know how it is for other people. For me, I, I have to kind of wrestle with my own, you know, rationalize my own purpose of, for existence. Um, most mornings. Um, and it's so, it, you know, it's, it's a really troublesome thing sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, because there's a lot of pain and suffering in the world. Yeah. And there's a lot of tragedy that I, that has touched me, you know, mm -hmm. uh, every one of us. Um, and it's always kind of on the brink of being unbearable. You know, it's like something that if I fed it, it could be unbearable mm -hmm. because there's that much pain, but actually putting forth effort in my body. Um, it's actually like, building i don't work out i don't exercise but i'm working mm -hmm. um and i'm not like proud of that i like exercise but i work and so i'm exerting my body and there's something that just there's something medicinal about it yeah and if i could go back, back to genesis again it's like the command is work six days mm -hmm. um i i can't even imagine how much trouble that has kept me from just work six days. I mean, everyone wants to rest the seventh. Well, I can't, you can't under, you know, underplay the importance of resting the seventh for someone like me, especially like you can go too hard. I mean, obviously and like break your body, but resting that seventh day is it's, it's amazing, mm -hmm. but only if you work the six, <laughs> you know, the first six, um, it's so appreciated. I mean, there's nothing like a well-earned nap, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, it, it's so good mentally. I, I don't know. I can't explain it. You know, the cybernetic nature of it or anything, but it is so powerful for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I would be a complete mess, probably an addict, you know, who knows what, um, just to stay sane. I, I don't, yeah. I don't want to even admit that, but probably, I mean, if I didn't have something that was really challenging me every day yeah um yeah oh man uh, it's been a blessing yeah and i've questioned it many times you know like you know is this really my purpose but um it is content i'm uh, it's contenting it's it's fulfilling yeah um for me but especially that embracing and, and really contending with the uh unknown the limitations yeah i hear you Mm -hmm. Um, how, if you were to say, talking to men, right? Talking to boys who are becoming men, talking to men who have been men for a long time. I know you're a humble guy, so maybe, I don't know, I have a feeling you might say like, I'm not qualified, but I'm curious <laughs> if you were going to give advice yeah. on what do you think, whether you do it through the lens of what God wants you to do as a man or whether you just think like, what do men need in general across the board? Um, because there, we have this something in us that wants to work hard, wants to probably do something with our hands. There's mm. something inside of us that wants to do that. How would you, what, what would you say to someone who maybe doesn't participate in something like that? Like maybe they work in an office and then they watch shows and then they go, you know, they just do life. Like they, they don't, they don't exert themselves mm -hmm. in a physical way. Like how being a man is hard in today's world. And so yeah. how, I mean, when honestly, society's trying to emasculate you. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, when I, if I, if I feel like I'm getting in that place, I usually, I usually try to have a conversation with someone that I respect and you're on that list that I think is like man tier, you know, <laughs> I'm trying to reach up and grab a hold of it. You know what I mean? So give some wisdom that you have gained through your experience. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, well, um, I can shoot at that. I'll give it a shot. All right. The first thing that comes to mind is um, work ethic. And it's not, I don't know exactly how to explain it. On a practical level, I own a business. I've owned a few. And the hardest thing in every trade, I believe, everyone that I've talked to is finding good help. Um, We have a ton of people that don't have jobs and we have a ton of industries with hands-on opportunity that can't find any work. Um, I don't exactly know what the disconnect is, but I know that it's a worthwhile endeavor. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about free work. I'm not talking about framing or welding. Um, I think it applies to writing just as much as video, you know, videography, Mm -hmm. just as much as music. Um, And they're, they're almost inseparable, you know, in the sense that Whatever I do, because I could be very, um, you know, I could be in the business world right now. That's that was my direction at one point, and I could be very driven um, for that. But you know, the root of all evil, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the love of money. Yeah. And so, in owning your own business, that's an important thing to to really recognize. Yeah. The, the power of uh, greed and that that drive because it's a driving force Mm -hmm. and that's why you're married, you know, to your business. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's a powerful, instead of the heart Google eyes, you get the googly, you know, dollar (laughs) sign eyes. Um, it's just a different sort of love, but you feed it, it, she feeds you sort of thing. Yeah. It's, um, it's not a great motivation. (laughs) I'll just put it lightly. Um, you will end up betraying everyone you love and yourself at some point, if that's your only motivation, Mm -hmm. obviously making money is great, but the love of it is the root of all evil. So the currency is not right. So if you want the correct currency, like you have to develop, I've had to develop an appetite for it where in the morning when I used to like really just think about the day and think about, Oh my goodness, did I really schedule like six huge removals today? <laughs> what am I thinking? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't feel like doing this worth a crap, Yeah, but I have enough, um, like confidence in just showing up. I, even when I feel crappy, I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to get there and I'm not going to call it off. I'll just show up at least and do one, you know, and then I'll probably just feel sick and want to go home. Yeah. But then I just get there and then I do the first one. I'm like, this is fun. You know, I'm getting into it. And then I just keep, you know, and and then I get all six removed and it's great sometimes. (laughs) Um, But it's something that, yeah, you kind of just, just try it. Just, you know, it's like the Shia LaBeouf, Shia LaBeouf. uh, (laughs) Just do it. Just do it. it. (laughs) do it you know whatever just however much you can manage at the moment just do that much Mm -hmm. and um usually it amounts to something at the end of the day it's not great advice but um yeah just try it. it and yeah i guess i i feel like there's always something that um you know i'll over um estimate my ability or my crew's ability to get a job done oftentimes, but that's like the other end of the stick, you know, cause it's like, I need a challenge that I c- could almost overwhelm me, but not quite, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's almost overwhelming. It's almost putting me under, but it's like just enough to keep me really engaged. I don't know. Something like that. It's like, just keep enough planned ahead that keeps you in like, I don't know. It's not overwhelmed. It's just, it, it's enough that could overwhelm you. Cause there are so many unexpected things that develop that could take you down, but it's yeah. like enough to really keep you engaged at the same time in life in a way that I don't find myself really justifying my existence so often. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So you're kind of saying, you're kind of saying, um, there's a, there's a way to contend with the idea of becoming overwhelmed mm. through creating and making and continuing your self well, moving yourself forward to keep busy, but also not putting yourself in a position where all of a sudden you have idle hands, you know, mm-hmm. and yes. there, you got to balance yes. that. 
Yeah. The first stage, yeah, idle hands. Recognize the power of idle hands. And if you don't, I mean, I haven't gone, thank God, down that road to the end, but I've gone far enough to know where it leads. And I hate it. Yeah. I, you know, that that's where part of my passion comes from because I've seen where it goes in mm -hmm. other people's life. Um, it's, it's kind of like my irreverent fear of like owning a business because this is something that can control you. It's something that can ruin your marriage. Um, I've seen it happen, unfortunately. Um, it's just a very painful thing. Excuse me. And that's, Idle hands are something I've seen destroy many people. Yeah. And I have good, good friends, man, that have taken their lives. And I'm like, dude, how, I mean, that are more talented than I am. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, it's not like a lack of ability or something like, what is it? But I think ultimately it comes down to that idleness mm -hmm. because it's the devil's playground. That's not a Bible verse. It just <laughs> is, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. That's the enemy. Yeah. Okay. So work ethic. Work Some, ethic. That that's a good uh note. Yeah. Uh, that's a good uh recommendation to people. Yeah. What the else? Cure uh, to all evil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh what else no would you say we're I think we're gonna wrap it up yeah. here in just a minute. But um talk a little bit uh actually let let's let's do this. I'll I'll let you uh plug your business and anything else you'd like to plug at the end of this, mm -hmm. but first, tell us what a real quick story of what might be the most amazing camping trip and what made it amazing. <laughs> Woo. The most amazing camping trip. Okay, well, I don't really have like favorite lists okay. cause I just, they're, I love it. I mean, some people are driven by money and greed. I'm driven by adventure and traveling, so. Yeah. I, I love to travel <laughs> and, um, realize how big the world is, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. But, um, and it never gets old because it's big, but then you realize how small it is. Yeah. So I guess I'll bring it back to, um, the Olympic peninsula. Um, the first time I went out there actually, um, was with Kyle Orsburn a good adventure buddy of mine. And he, we set out with a good bit of research, but knowing, you know, this is a very auspicious uh, location. You know, there are a lot of people that have gone missing. There are bears. It's, it's, it's grizzly country. There are mountain lions. I saw one out there once, <laughs> but this time, <laughs> um, and that was at the dead of night and extremely terrifying as well. <laughs> you but, told me that story. Uh, <laughs> yeah, good time. But this was actually a, a hike that we decided we were going to do that was going to be three nights. And we were going to do fishing and eat some fish and um, only taking out the bare minimal, like, you know, the filter for water and some cliff bars, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Bunch of idiots. But we started out um, the, um, it's the Olympic National Forest Trail. I believe. And it goes into the heart of it. It goes up to, um, goes 23 miles. You get to, um, it's called the enchanted forest. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and you get, well, you walk into the enchanted Valley and it's called the land of a thousand waterfalls. It is an amazing place. It's kind of where they based avatar off of the movie, cool. that world. There. Um, and so there are, there are ferns, you know, little ferns, they grow to like eight feet tall. It's just weird. These things are just old old trees, old growth forest. And there's the elevation climb that I mentioned. There's so much snow and we did not realize that we would be encountering this type of freezing cold snow, you know, weather. And it was a whiteout for a little while. While we were hiking, we were trying to do 23 miles into the Enchanted Valley in one day, which is completely absurd <laughs> in the fall because they were already had a ton of snow out there, which we didn't know. Yeah. And so we went out trying to get there and we decided if we can get there now we're soaked we didn't have snowshoes or anything and we're walking in knee deep snow which is a lot of effort and so we decided we'll get there we'll take a nap and we'll hike back out 
because we wanted to get in there. It was 23 miles in. We were already committed, you know, 15 miles when the snow hit and the snow started getting deeper, but we were committed. Yeah. So we were, we were almost there. I mean, I, we didn't know how many miles we had gone, but we decided, okay, we're not going to be able to survive nightfall. It's too cold. We didn't have reception. Um, we decided to turn around and this was about three o'clock in the afternoon. So we were still going to be hiking in the dark, but when we um, turned around at some point, we lost our way. Oh no. And we knew the general direction. Yeah. Cause it was snowing like that. You know what I'm saying? Where it filled in our, we couldn't, we, we couldn't see where the trail was anymore. Mm -hmm. um, we couldn't see our own footprints. And so there were, th th it was pretty scary. But, you know, you just keep hiking, but you don't, you just make sure you're walking in the generally, you know, correct direction. Don't concentrate on um, anything, but trying to get the general direction down and just keep hiking. Yeah. Cause at this point we were like kind of scared. So at one point we stopped and we still weren't on the official trail or maybe we were, but we didn't know it. And there it's all forested. And on the edge of this clearing, we hear rustling and we're like totally ready for a, a grizzly, you yeah. know, but there was this guy, a, a guy that comes out of the woods with, um, with, with snowshoes and a huge pack. And I just remember yelling, it's a human. <laughs> you know, and, I was like, so like, and he comes out of the woods and I thought he was an angel. He may have been because he comes out of the woods and we said, how long have you been in here? He said, man, I started before the blizzard started eight days ago. Um, and I've been camping out back here and just living off the land. They're always like black, they're things you can eat. And this guy was, you know, he looked kind of like me, but more legitimate <laughs> yeah. tree ivy mountain man. And it was just the most amazing thing because it, we, it was so hard to hike. But then with the snowshoes, it padded down the snow so we could hike and make a lot better time. Yeah. And it was still far after nightfall when we got back to um, the road but we made it with him mm -hmm. and then and then um this guy i believe his name is jake um if i remember correctly i'm not great with names but this dude one minute we got to the car and we were like wow we made it thank you so much bro and we like opened the car we set our packs down and he's gone <laughs> and i mean we're at the road so I'm like what i just figured we would give him a ride somewhere. I have no idea where he ended up. Yeah. Yeah. But he must have camped out that night and I have no idea where. That guy was hardcore. Jake just left or he just uh, uh, Jake. you didn't need his assistance anymore, so he just went back to wherever he came. There was no goodbye. <laughs> there was seriously like I I mean, I it may have been an angel. I don't want to make that claim, but I seriously I turned to Kyle, I was like, he was totally an angel. Dude, that's, <laughs> was like, that's yeah. pretty, that's a pretty interesting situation to find yourself in. And then just to run across a dude named Jake who has everything you guys need to be able to make it yeah. out. And, and then all of a sudden there. it's just like, and knew the way out. Yeah. Yeah. He actually had a better map than we did too, man. which meant a whole lot. That's awesome, yeah. man. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very cool. We're uh, we need to have you on and just tell more stories like yeah, that. I want to do I want to do the next podcast we do uh with you in person. Um, yeah, we because that would okay. be in person. Podcasts are better in person, just with the distance. It's easier to do it through video sometimes to get get some cool stories and good knowledge in. But we'll do the next podcast with you in person next time I see you. Hopefully, yeah. um, but in the meantime, to close this out, tell us a little bit. Tell the people about your tree business um, and plug whatever. If you're on social media or something, just plug your uh, plug your work. Okay, okay yeah. Um, well, yeah, the tree business here in Rock Hill, it's Urban Lumberjacks. Um, it's run by my brother-in-law and I. Uh, Charlie is, or Charles, <laughs> um, only people close to him call him Charlie. <laughs> but he's an awesome dude that started doing tree work about a year ago. And when I got back into town, started helping him and training him and he's doing an awesome job and is very savvy, quick learner. And it's just, it's great. Um, we have a small client base, um, but we're growing. Uh, we've been in business for about six months and we're in the York County area. Mm -hmm. We serve service Charlotte, um, Gastonia, if we have to, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we, we do 
pretty much anything you can do to trees, yeah. you know, yeah. as far as, you know, cool. yeah, I don't know if I ever said that. Um, Arbor, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, Canopy Crafters is another uh, business um, without any advertisement. So forget that one for now. That's more of like the lumber mill where I'm going in the future. But Urban Lumberjacks is on Facebook and Google. We, uh, hey, if you can build a website and you want to do that for us, that'd be great. <laughs> but um, we're not really that tech savvy. So we kind of do what we can. And it's all word of mouth for the most part. We uh, cool. have a yeah. contract with York County. So that's a new development that's really awesome. Awesome. So, yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. the publicity, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, Thanks. I can't promise you you get work from us. I mean, but, from this, but you might. Either way, people, uh, if you need, if you need tree work done, mm -hmm. maybe woodwork in general. I don't know everything Noah does. Um, think of Noah and his business first. Mm -hmm. But uh, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much for hanging with us and uh, listening to us talk to Noah. Hope yep. you enjoyed it. Um, subscribe yeah, on YouTube. Yep. And uh, visit our website, uh, WiseWorksFilms.com. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you guys so much. You both are great. Yeah. <laughs> God bless you.